Welding has come a long way and with our advancement in technology, welding is now an art that anyone can do. Today I'm going to be talking about welding evolution. Hello, viewers. Before we begin, if you don't subscribe yet, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new videos. Welding goes back to ancient times. We have examples from the Bronze Age. Welding lap joints together made gold circular boxes. These boxes were made over 2000 years ago. The Egyptians and people in the Eastern Mediterranean area learned to weld iron pieces together during the Iron Age. Some tools have been found from 1000 BC. The art of blacksmithing developed during the Middle Ages, and many items of iron were hammered together. Welding as we know it today was invented in the 19th century. In 1836, English scientist Edmund Davy discovered acetylene. Sir Humphrey Davy made an arc by connecting two carbon electrodes with a battery in 1800. Electric generators and arc lighting became popular in the mid-19th century. Gas welding and cutting were developed in the late 1800s. With the development of carbon arc and metal arc welding, resistance welding became a practical joining process. In 1881, Auguste de Mertens used an arc to join lead plates for storage batteries in France's Cabot Laboratory. Russian Nikolai N. Bernardos, who worked in a French laboratory, was the one to patent welding. A fellow Russian, Stanislaus Olszewski, secured a British patent in 1885 and an American patent in 1887. The patents showed an electrode holder. It was the beginning of carbon arc welding. Bernardo's welding was limited to carbon arc welding, although he was able to weld iron and lead. Carbon arc welding became popular in the late 1890s and early 1900s. In 1890, CL. Coffin of Detroit received the first U.S. patent for arc welding using a metal electrode. This is the first record of filler metal being deposited in a joint from the electrode melted across the arc. At the same time, NG. Slovenianov presented the same idea of transferring metal across an arc by casting it in a mold. Stromanger introduced a coated metal electrode in Great Britain around 1900. The arc was more stable because of the thin coating of clay or lime. A covered electrode was invented by Oskar Kjellberg of Sweden between 1907 and 1914. The electrodes were made by dipping short lengths of bare iron wire into thick mixtures of carbonates and silicates and allowing the mixture to dry. Resistance welding processes were developed, including spot welding, seam welding, projection welding, and flash budding. L.U. Thompson invented resistance welding. His patents date from 1885 to 1900. Goldschmidt invented thermite welding in 1903, which was first used to weld railroad rails. Gas welding and cutting were also perfected during this period. Oxygen production and later liquefying of air, along with the introduction of a blowpipe or torch in 1887, contributed to the development of welding and cutting. Hydrogen and coal gas were used before 1900. About 1900, a torch suitable for use with low-pressure acetylene was developed. During World War I, welding was pressed into service for armament production. Companies sprang up in America and Europe to manufacture welding machines and electrodes. The American Welding Society was founded in 1919 by 20 members of the Wartime Welding Committee of the Emergency Fleet Corporation, under the leadership of Comfort Avery Adams. Alternating current was invented in 1919 by C.J. Holslag, but it was not popular until the 1930s and heavy-coated electrodes became widespread. Automatic welding was introduced in 1920. A bare electrode wire operated on direct current and arc voltage was used to control the feed rate. Welding is automated by P.O. Nobel of General Electric. It was used to repair worn motor shafts and worn crane wheels. The automobile industry also used it to make rear axle housings. In the 1920s, welding electrodes were developed. Between heavy-coated and light-coated rods, there was considerable controversy during the 1920s. The heavy-coated electrodes were developed by Langstroth and Wunder of the A.O. Smith Company used them in 1927. As early as 1929, Lincoln Electric Company produced extruded electrode rods. Covered electrodes were widely used by 1930. Welding codes emerged that required better quality weld metal, which increased the use of covered electrodes. 
In the 1920s, there was considerable research into shielding the arc and welding area with external gases. Oxygen and nitrogen in contact with molten metal caused brittle and sometimes porous welds. Researchers used gas shielding to achieve this. Alexander and Langmuir worked with hydrogen as a welding atmosphere. Starting with carbon electrodes, they later switched to tungsten electrodes. Hydrogen was converted to atomic hydrogen in the arc. It was then blown out of the arc, forming a molecular hydrogen flame and releasing heat. Half as much heat was produced as an oxyacetylene flame. This became atomic hydrogen welding. Atomic hydrogen never became popular, but it was used for special welding applications during the 1930s and 1940s. H.M. Hobart and P.K. Devers were doing similar work but using atmospheres of argon and helium. In their patents applied for in 1926, gas was used around an arc to weld. This was a forerunner to gas tungsten arc welding. There was also welding with a concentric nozzle and the electrode being fed as a wire through the nozzle. This process was the forerunner of gas arc welding. Later, these processes were developed. The New York Navy Yard developed stud welding in 1930 for attaching wood decking to metal surfaces. It became popular in shipbuilding and construction. It was the submerged arc welding process that became popular. The National Tube Company developed this arc welding process for a pipe mill in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. It was used to make longitudinal seams in pipes. Robinoff invented the process in 1930, which was later sold to Linda Air Products Company as Unimelt Welding. Shipyards and ordnance factories used submerged arc welding during the defense buildup in 1938. This welding method remains popular today. Gas tungsten arc welding was developed by C.L. Confin, who patented a non-oxidizing gas atmosphere in 1890. Further refinements were made by H.M. Hobart, who used helium and P.K. Davis used argon. It was ideal for welding magnesium, stainless steel, and aluminum. Heliarc welding was invented in 1941 by Meredith and patented. Later, Linda Air Products developed a water-cooled torch with it. Gas tungsten arc welding has become a major process. Gas metal arc welding GMAW, was developed at Battelle Memorial Institute in 1948 with sponsorship from the Air Reduction Company. Gas shielded arcs are similar to gas tungsten arcs, but a continuously fed electrode wire replaces the tungsten electrode. With the small diameter electrode wires and constant voltage power source, the process became more usable. The idea was originally patented by H.E. Kennedy. GMAW was initially introduced for welding non-ferrous metals. The high deposition rate prompted users to try it on steel. Inert gas was expensive, and the cost savings were not apparent immediately. Using carbon dioxide gas and consumable electrodes, Lobavsky I and Navashilov introduced welding in 1953. Due to its ability to use equipment developed for inert gas metal arc welding, the CO2 welding process was immediately popular. The CO2 arc is a hot arc and the larger electrode wires require high currents. With smaller electrode wires and refined power supplies, the process became more widely used. A short-circuit arc variation known as microwire, short arc, and dips transfer welding appeared late in 1958 and early in 1959. Gas metal arc welding allowed all-position welding on thin materials, and soon became the most popular variation. Another variation used inert gas with small amounts of oxygen for the spray-type arc transfer. It became popular during the 1960s. Recent variations use pulsed current. Current is switched from a high to a low value at a rate of once or twice the line frequency. After CO2 welding was introduced, special electrode wires were developed. The wire, described as an inside-out electrode, was tubular in cross-section with fluxing agents on the inside. The process was called dual shield, which used external shielding gas in addition to the gas produced by the flux in the core of the wire. Bernard's invention was announced in 1954, but patented in 1957 and the National Cylinder Gas Company reintroduced it. An inside-outside electrode was produced in 1959 that did not require external gas shielding. For non-critical work, the absence of shielding gas made the process popular. It was called inner shield registered. 
Electroslag welding was announced by the Soviets at the Brussels World Fair in 1958. Since 1951, it had been used in the Soviet Union, but it was based on work by R.K. Hippians, who received a patent in 1940. Nevertheless, Hopkins was never widely used for joining. In Kiev, Ukraine, and Bratislava, Czechoslovakia, equipment and processes were developed at the Peyton Institute Laboratory and the Welding Research Laboratory. First used in the U.S. was at the Electromotive Division of General Motors Corporation in Chicago, where it was called the Electromolding Process. In 1959, the fabrication of welded diesel engine blocks was announced. This process and its variation, using a consumable guide tube, is used for thicker materials. 1961, Arcos Corporation introduced Electrogas, another vertical welding method. Utilizing equipment developed for electroslag welding, but with a flux cord electrode wire and an external gas shield. There is no slag bath involved in this process. Newer developments use self-shielding electrode wires, and a variation uses gas-shielded solid wires. They allow the welding of thin materials that cannot be welded with electroslag. In 1957, he invented plasma arc welding. The process involves a constricted arc or an arc through an orifice, which creates arc plasma with a higher temperature than the tungsten arc. Also used for spraying metal, gouging, and cutting. Developed in France, electron beam welding uses a focused beam of electrons to heat a vacuum chamber. The process was first publicly disclosed on November 23, 1957, by J.A. Store of the French Atomic Energy Commission. The automotive and aircraft engine industries are major users of electron beam welding in the U.S. Most recent, the Soviet Union developed friction welding, which uses rotational speed and upset pressure to provide friction heat. The process is specialized and suitable only when a large number of similar parts are to be welded. The process is called inertia welding. Laser welding is a relatively new process. As a communications device, the laser was developed at Bell Telephone Laboratories. The tremendous concentration of energy in a small space made it a powerful heat source. Metals and non-metals have both been cut with it. Continuum pulse equipment is available. Laser welding is becoming popular in automotive metalworking operation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more videos from our channel, subscribe and make sure to turn on the bell icon.